Welcome to another RELTIO community show. My name is Chris Detzel, and today's topic is RELTIO Integration Hub with Sajid Edvara. Uh, so uh, Sajid, he's a Senior Director of Data Science Platform at Edvara. Uh, by the way, this is gonna be a fireside chat, so it should be really fun. Uh, Ian Basu, he's here again, uh, talking uh, to Sajid, uh, specifically around RELTIO Integration Hub. He's our Senior Director of Product here at RELTIO, and I'm the Director of Customer uh, Community and Engagement. So as usual, um, please keep yourself on mute. Uh, all questions should be asked in the chat, or feel free to take yourself off of mute and ask. As usual, I will ask those questions that are put into the chat, um, and then we can go from there. So we will be recording this and posting this to the RELTIO uh, community. So today's call we, is the 28th. So we have uh, uh, Sajid and uh, Ian. So really excited about that on RELTIO Integration Hub. On the 25th of August, so we're going to skip a few weeks of shows just because, you know, we're in the summer uh, and uh, we'll get it started again uh, on the 25th of August. And this one is another RELTIO integration hub to automate RELTIO workflows. Should be a lot of fun uh, on that. And then on the 29th of September, we have blazing trails and master data. So stories from women succeeding in master data management. I do look at, I, I do foresee uh, September being a busy month with shows. I just haven't had a chance to schedule those as of yet. Um, so Ian, I'm going to stop sharing. I do, I'll let you kind of uh, manage this piece, but Sajid will say a few things here shortly, but I'll let you kind of share your screen and get us started. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Um, so hi, everybody. Thank you for joining and spending some time with us. So we have our special guest here today, Sajid Zayed from Advera. And today's session will be a really interesting one because Sajid has uh, graciously agreed to talk to us about his experience using the RELTIO Integration Hub. So some of you might be aware um, of what the product is. It's our low-code, no-code platform designed to dramatically simplify and accelerate uh, the process of building integrations and connecting RELTIO to your enterprise applications. Uh, and so Sajid will, will talk at length about that and we'll have a, a, a fireside chat. I'll ask him a bunch of questions and also you'll have an opportunity to ask questions as well. Um, so without further ado, I'd love to jump into this, but I would love for Sajid, if, if you wanna do a quick introduction about yourself, Advera, the company, uh, and I'll share a couple of slides that can showcase how you guys use RELTIO and then more specifically, RELTIO integration. So Sajid, over to you. Thank you so much, Ayan, for that introduction. So my name is Sajid Sayed. I'm a senior director for enterprise data science platform at, at Advera. Advera is in a business of making uh, clinical trials safer, smarter, and faster. Uh, we have two lines of business. We have a consulting business where we have uh, independent review boards uh, to manage the clinical trials. And then there is also clinical trial management software uh, that, that we build. That's a technology side of the house. Uh, currently, I am in the data science space and I've been, I've been with Advera about two years now and I've been tasked to build this data science platform for Advera. Okay, awesome. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen, and if you could talk just a little bit more about your data platform vision, and then we'll jump into RELTIO Integration Hub. Sure. So the vision for the data science platform is to you know turn data into assets, and to do that, we were asked to build this data platform uh, with the objective of you know creating the reporting analytics. Uh, help create standalone products and data APIs that we could service out to our customers. And to do that, we established these four steps to help us get there. First, we wanted to create a data right and governance body, right? For that, we wanted uh, data stewards. We wanted to create data governance council. Um, now, Advera has growth through acquisitions. So what we also wanted to do was unify Advera data products, right? Um, curate the data, profile it, cleanse it, master it, and then publish it. Okay, perfect. 
And then uh, on this slide, it would be really great to uh, just understand how rel integration hub fits into this overall diagram. So uh, Advera, like you said, you know, is a company of, you know, has done a lot of growth through acquisitions, right? And some of the sources of its transactional system, some are multi-tenant, some are single tenant transactional databases. Uh, our objective was to ingest the data, bring all that data into a raw zone. This is where, you know, all the governance, you know, was coming in. And this is where we were cleansing the data, profiling the data. And after this, we do a transformation within the Snowflake layer. And then through Realtio Integration Hub, we move it out to, you know, Realtio. Okay, perfect. Um, so we're going to come back to this diagram in a little bit and dive into a lot more detail. Um, and obviously the audience here will be able to ask some questions uh, so thank you for that overview uh, of yourself, Advera, and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, so I'd love to ask you, um, what, you know, how did you first become familiar with rel Integration Hub at the beginning of this journey? All right. So I think the diagram that you saw, the architecture diagram that you saw, right, that's how we started. We knew our sources of our data. We had to bring that data to our data cloud for which we had choose Snowflake as a platform. We were doing, and, and we had an ETL tool that was ELT tool that was bringing the data to this particular raw zone. And now we had to do the last hop where we had to move the data to RELTIO, right? And unfortunately, the tool ETL tools that we picked, uh, and, and most of the ETL tools, were moving the data from the transaction system to the warehouse, but not from the warehouse to the transactional system, right? So that was the problem that we wanted to solve for. And any tool that we are integration tool that we are looking in the market would cost us about 100K to do that. And we need super specialist skills uh, to staff for that. So we reached out to RELTIO with our problem statement and RELTIO introduced us to RIH over here, uh, which was native, which came out of uh, the box, uh, you know, with our RELTIO implementation. And, you know, that's how we were introduced uh, to RIH. Okay, perfect. And, you know, it, it looks like Relative Integration Hub was the solution that appealed to you early on. Uh, what, what, was, what was it about the tool itself that you felt like at that point in time would help you solve this problem? Was there specific aspects of it that, that really stood out to you? Yeah, I think a lot of it. First, it is, a, it is native to, you know, Relative. So, you know, our source, of data was Snowflake, our destination was Realtio, what we were trying to build at that point of time, right? We are still in our earlier, uh, early phase of our implementation. Um, and like you said, we didn't want to like invest and we are part of a data science team. So we didn't want to like, you know, purchase this integration uh, solution to just solve for this niche problem that we have. We were able to get the data from all different sources. Um, so RIH came native to RELTIO. So there was not a whole lot for us to do to enable that. Um, it was a low code environment. So again, you know, not, not a steep learning curve. Um, it came with a pre-built connectors for Snowflake and RELTIO, right? So, so that made our life, a job easier. So I think those were a condition. Those were, those were the early, uh, earlier, you know, um, insights that really helped us, you know, make the decision. Okay, perfect. Uh, and so let's say relative integration of was not available to you. Uh, you said it would have cost you about $100,000 for an alternative solution. What would that alternative solution have looked like? And how would you have gone down that route? Yeah, so I think so we were looking at a lot of integration platforms to help us do that, right? So and, and the other problem with some of the integration platform um, were that we would have to own and manage those systems. And now we got Snowflake as a SaaS based solution versus we got Realtio, which is SaaS based. Now, just for this problem, small problem statement, having an integration platform and owning and managing, maintaining, and the cost for it would just not, you know, work for us, right? So, so that, that and we are trying to run away from from that, right? Uh, we were not in an integration space. We were not creating a center of excellence around, uh, you know, integration, data integration. Uh, we are a data science team, and we wanted to stay in our zone. Got it. No, that's perfect. And then, you know, as you think about Relative Integration Hub and the, the points that you mentioned, the fact that it's low code, uh, not a steep learning curve, what did it look like initially for your teams to get used to the tool? How did they learn what to do um, early on in the journey? Can you talk about what that initial experience was like for the development teams? 
Uh, sure. So I think, you know, thanks to our CSM team, you know, first they introduced us to the platform, right? Um, they gave us an overview of the platform. Once we knew that, then they referred us to a documentation um, for LTO. So, you know, we heavily relied on that documentation to, you know, upskill ourselves. Uh, and again, it's a low code platform. So it didn't took us a lot to figure things out. Like just from a navigation perspective, we just needed to understand where is what. Uh, once we knew that, and then whenever we were trying to build this, if you would run into a trouble, we would either log a support or reach out to a CSM team. Um, so it was, you know, fairly straightforward for us to do the implementation. Okay, awesome. And then uh, what did the implementation process actually look like? And more specifically, uh, would you be able to kind of give the audience uh, a comparison of coding up that entire solution, you know, writing hundreds, thousands of lines of code versus using the relative integration hub and putting a solution like that together? Yeah, so I think just from an implementation perspective, first thing what we had to do was uh, make sure relative, inti uh, relative integration hub was enabled in our environment, dev test production. Once that was there, we had to make sure that, you know, our connection endpoints, right? So I think whatever work that we had to do was to ensure relative connection came out of the box. We had to configure for uh, Snowflake uh, connection. Um, then I, I think one thing for us to be aware of was, you know, best practices. So RIH will have its own best practices. We had to understand from an organization wide, you know, what were our internal best practices that we uh, wanted to implement. Um, and, and then DevOps perspective, how do we make sure that this integration moves between um, our dev test and production environment? So these were some things that, you know, we had to be mindful about. And again, from a coding perspective, there was hardly any, but what we still had to learn is how to, what, what does looping mean? Like, you know, what does logging mean? And, you know, how to go about that when we're handling a large, about large amount of J JSON files, how do we break it up? So, so there are things that you need to know. Not everything will happen magically, uh, mm -hmm. but then we didn't write to, we didn't have to code around all those. Right. And then generally, you know, after the entire solution was built, um, what was the overall kind of feedback and experience, especially after the team learned the tool, learned kind of the inner workings of it? What was, what was the general feedback that you came across? Uh, so, you know, so, you know, like with everything else that we did, right? So I think this was this was the last piece of the puzzle uh, that that we were supposed to, you know, uh, uh, you know, complete. And and we completed this like, you know, four times faster than we had actually anticipated that that we will, uh, you know, reach a problem. So from an experience perspective, it was much easier for us to do. Um, and then what we did not have to do is we didn't have to go and hire a super integration specialist. Right. So we had a data engineer who had other jobs and was quickly able to, you know, come get up spill, do this integration and go back to the job. So for us, just from an, uh, you know, going to market perspective and, you know, and, and keeping the system up and ready, there was hardly any, any, any maintenance or production support that we have to, you know, set up around this. Yeah, that, that's great. And, you know, you said it, it was about four times faster. Uh, what are the key things that accelerated that? Obviously, the coding aspect is one. What are the other things that contributed to the speed? Do you think right. everything is everything is UI based, right? So you know, everything is UI based. It's not a separate entity to Reltio, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know what we had to do is we have to understand the Reltio data model. We had to understand the destination data model. But because it came in connected with Reltio, I think that part was very easy for us. Um, there was uh, no environment management, right? If we had this different environment, we had to make sure we are managing, uh, you know, all these different environments, which we didn't have to uh, do, right? So we have zero production support team uh, for, for integration. All we do is logging. So as part of that RH piece, we log. So we need to understand our system from uh, the entire data pipeline perspective. So what we do is as part of that RH process, we log everything that's happening into the system. And now we have this central portal where we see, you know, this entire data transformation um, that's happening. And so it just makes it easy. That's the only focus that we have. We don't really have to worry about the platform. Okay. No, that's great. I, I see some questions coming into chat, which is great. Um, so I, I do want to read out this first question. So how is the integration of performing in terms of latency of data loads and 
uh, any challenges in performance that you ran into? Can you talk about the, the performance testing and data load aspect of what you encountered? So, right, so, you know, I don't know if I have like, you know, the benchmarks that we did, but I think what we did as part of our first implementation, everything was in batch mode. Everything is was in batch mode. I think what we can do if we had to do this again, uh, right? And our as we improve the process, now we can actually create real time integrations with our edge, right? Yeah. Uh, so that is a performance that that we have to be mindful about. Uh, but if we start doing this real time, and like I said, we are getting the data from the source uh, to this uh, Snowflake area, we are doing a lot of transformation. There are certain data quality checks that we can do actually in flight. Right. And, and you know, so I think that's where we are. We are kind of leading into f our future states will actually, you know, really have that. And uh, you know, even though you did batch mode and batch loading, and you talked about going real time, which is great, uh, is there anything you encountered that would um, create any pause or concern in terms of performance, or did you feel like the plat the platform itself met your performance criteria? Yeah, so it did meet the criteria, but I think just something to be careful about, like something that we are still, you know, we are still in the learning phase, right? Right now, when we are extracting data out of Realtio, you get this major JSON file. So what we'll have to understand is how do we, how do we loop through that? How do we, like, you, how do we compartmentalize that and don't take like one big file, but uh -huh. a certain amount of, you know, data at one time, pass through it and move it. So there are certain things that we learn as part of the implementation. It's not a, uh, performance drawback more it's something for us to learn and know how to use the platform yeah yeah that's great uh so another question we have in the chat is how much time uh did it take to uh from the uh, decision of using relative integration up all the way to going live into production what was that time frame uh so i think we so going so just from a relative integration hub it was like four weeks worth of effort Four weeks to work to build yeah. it, right? But and dev test production, yeah. Correct, so yeah. But, and everything else was not just, just linear because there were other uh, right. program and project decisions that we had to make. But just yeah. from a dev effort, it took us, you know, uh, four weeks to do that. And and most of that, and 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 just to disclaimer there, we don't have any complex transformation in that. It's a mm -hmm. simple, straightforward pipeline, pipeline because we had done major of the transformation within the Snowflake uh, area. And this was just the last push that we were doing. And as part of that last put, we discovered that, hey, there is a lot that we can actually do in this platform. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, if you had to code the solution, obviously it would take much longer than four weeks. Is that an accurate statement? Oh, yes, definitely. And the, and the other problem is then, you know, that that knowledge is with that particular developer alone, right? Yeah. So now if, there, if we run into any issues with RealTO, a, it's very easy for somebody to look at it and figure out what's happening, but then we can also go to our support forums and, you know, uh, customer support and figure out if there are certain things, but, but we didn't want to get locked into like, uh, you know, where the IP is just with that particular developer and we cannot use our, uh, you know, the other people in our data engineering team to support the solution. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you did, men you did mention the fact that supporting the solution long-term maintainability that's much easier with integration of as opposed to separate infrastructure separate in integration that is a whole it development team that's dedicated to supporting that correct yeah. and like you know from a data science team we wanted to you know go to market like really really fast right and and as many if you start having these different technologies we need to have super specialists to support each of them and yeah. then DevOps process in each of them. If there is something with a larger memory, we need to increase that memory. And then if there's a different set of data source, we need to create tunnels or whatever we need to get to get to that data source. So now we have avoided all that by going to a SaaS platform, which is natively integrated with these sources and comes with pre-built connectors for most of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so another question, is there any training on RH provided by Reltio, videos, documentation? Uh, we do have uh, an extensive list of links, documentation, videos, webinars like this, where we talk through Relative Integration Hub. Um, so if you go to the Relative YouTube channel, you'll see a lot. There's Relative Academy. There's uh, links to documentation on our website. Uh, but then also a question for you, uh, Sanjay, is uh, how did the training happen on your team? Like, 
you mentioned going to documentation. Did they also go through Relative Academy, the Workado Academy train? Can you talk a little bit about how they train themselves on this tool? I think so. Yeah. So I think the same material that you spoke about, I think like, like the biggest help that we had was from the CSM team, right? So you guys gave us a jump start. So once we were over there, then it was it like, you know, the help documents were actually, you know, good enough for us to, you know, solve most of the problems. Like the, the large payload issues that I was talking about, those are something that we actually figured out while, while doing what we are trying to do. And for those issues, we logged a support ticket and the support team helped us out with solutions for that. Mm -hmm. Got it. Next question is in the architecture diagram, uh, let me pull that one up. Uh, give me one second. It looks like there's both um, cleansing and actually give me one second. I'm just going to pull this up before I continue on with the question. Um, so yeah, there, there's a separate cleansing that you do here. Uh, but then the question is in Reltio, you also have cleansing. So can you talk a little bit about this versus what's done in Reltio itself? Right. And, and mind you, like, you know, all of these things we did in separate phases and um, separate phases. So, you know, what we did was in this particular case, when we got this data from these different sources as the, as the first part of that activity, we did data profiling. Um, and, and we did a lot of data cleansing over here and transformation so that at, at that point of time, we had not actually decided our MDM solution, right? So when we started this whole implementation, we were thinking about, hey, can we just do this natively ourselves? We have this data over here, we cleanse it. And then we very quickly figured out that we need a, a MDM solution, which has a data model, you know, in the industry that, that we, we need to suffice it. So, so this is what we started with. And as we are, um, you know, as we are maturing a model, like I said, our goal is to get relative closer to the data sources and, and you know, drop uh, the in-between, uh, you know, applications. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So going down the list of questions, uh, do you, and this is getting into a, a level of detail, which you, you might not have awareness to, uh, but, you know, we, we talk a lot about this concept of tasks right, the, the steps in between and all of our customers get a default number of tasks for the recipes. Uh, did, did you have any thoughts around optimization of tasks in the recipe, how your team viewed that? Uh, any, anything you wanna share around the, the compute resources used? Yeah, so at this, at this point of time, we had some dis um, uh, discussion around that, but for whatever we are, do are doing, in our space, we were hardly touching in any of those limits. So, so we were we are not actually in that space where we have to do any efficiency gains in, in what we are doing right now. So we actually didn't dive any deep in, in, in that part so far. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, another question is, and a lot of a lot of people do ask this, you know, relative integration hub, is it for batch? Is it for real time? Uh, from what you just mentioned, Sajid, and even things that we have talked about from a rel two perspective, you can use rel two integration hub both in a batch in real time manner. It offers you that level of flexibility. Uh, I, I don't have you gone into any of the real time integration just yet, or is it too early to provide it's, any thoughts there? It's too early, but but it is like you know you know like from the from the call out that somebody had right. There's just so much cleansing that you are doing in between. Right now, there is so much shift that we can do in transit, right? While creating a field, you know, check this, check that, make sure that the, if, if there is a golden record already existing, use that instead of creating one. And we can do that all real time. So I think I think that's that's the world that we have to be in. But as we are, like we said, you know, we have a lot of growth due uh, due to acquisition. We have to also figure out how do we create pipelines into all of the system. And you know, we really think RH can play actually a big role in that space. Perfect. And actually, that's a good segue into the question that I meant to ask you earlier. Uh, can you provide some insight into what the longer term plan looks like with RIH? Uh, obviously, you've had good experiences so far. As you think about like one year down the road, two years down the road, can it actually be that uh, center central connectivity integration platform into your larger, broader ecosystem efforts? Yeah, no, I, I definitely 
think that that's the way that, that that's the area that we need to invest in right bring bring uh, bring relio close to source as as much as possible move most of it whatever we can from batch to real time and mm-hmm. and to connect all these different uh, you know transactional applications that like we said we have generated through growth all right so i think um, you know i think that is the biggest business value that that we can get awesome yeah uh, and there are some questions coming in chat you know does it integrate to salesforce viva crm yes it can integrate to those applications uh, we do have a specific connector for salesforce that relative provides which I would recommend looking at first. And then relative integration can be used for additional use cases on top of that, that the Salesforce connector cannot solve today because it's purpose-built for certain use cases. Um, but that's really the beauty of our, the relative integration hub is this vast amount of flexibility it provides to integrate to all these different applications. And Sajid, you mentioned one of the biggest appealing factors was the uh, fact that it, the platform does come with a lot of pre-built out-of-the-box connectors that you've already used the Snowflake connector that's in there, and there's others that you can look at. Um, and how, you know, as, as, as you looked at these other platforms versus Relative Integration Hub, what did that look like, the, the pre-built connectors out-of-the-box? Is that, was that a criteria for comparison as, as you looked at different systems? No, definitely. So we have a very heterogeneous environment. We have Oracle, SQL Server, Postgres. We have, so we have all of that. Uh, so for us to make sure that, you know, there are connectors for, and then different versions of Oracle, right? We have somewhere pluggable database, uh, you know, in, in Oracle. So we wanted to make sure that we have connectors for all, all these environments. So I think that that was very critical for us. We didn't want to create a single pipeline for, you know, one platform for, for each transaction system that we had. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just one-stop shop for everything would be obviously the ideal way to go. Uh, so looking back on your integration of journey and experience, what would you have done differently? What were the learnings? Uh, what would you recommend to the people that have joined this call that have maybe haven't used relative integration of any advice or guidance you would have for them? Yeah, so I think we looked at RIH very late in our journey. Right. And maybe it was just released about that time too. Right. So we just started with our problem to solve. Like, right? so we said, okay, I just want to connect from this source to this source. And that's about it. Right. But I think for anybody starting fresh, I would like to tell them that take a step back, look at what RH has to, uh, you know, offer from a whole platform perspective. Right. Like there are so many transformations that you could do in flight. So see if you can use that. Right. Uh, there are so many jobs that you can actually schedule in there. Right. Versus like some, some of the, challenges that we have like snowflake is is a, is a great platform when we start putting tasks and all that in there it's just a little hard from a ui perspective to know you know which bad job is running where so there's a lot of those that you can kind of you know shift uh, to that that really can do that uh, rh can do that for you okay yeah that's great um great great tips uh, we do have another question do we need an additional license for using the connector application like SAP ECC or HANA. So that's that's one of the, the benefits of this platform is you don't need a, additional licenses. Any connector that's on the integration hub, you can just use. It's all available to you at no additional cost. For setting up to on-prem environments, there is a, an agent that's on the platform that would need to be enabled for you to connect to on-prem applications, but it is possible through integration hub. Is, is uh, anything on the on-prem side that you looked at connecting, Sajid, as part of your RH efforts? I think we will have to. At this point, of not. But like some of our Oracle databases and, you know, um, are on-prem. So I think we will have to, you know, address that, you know, when we try to build our real-time integrations. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we do have other customers that are actively integrating to uh, on-prem applications today using integration hub. Uh, so another question is, last time we had to use a custom interface to get data from CRM to Salesforce. Um, there, there will be no issues using the RH integration for Salesforce with merging or any other integrations. We do have customers that are doing that today. Um, but you, if you have specific questions around that, we can have a discussion on it offline. Uh, but so far we haven't encountered any blockers or obstacles in terms of integration of being used to uh, 
solve all these various use cases on these platforms. Um, another question is, is RH used internally? And by the way, RH is the acronym for relative integration. Hub. Probably you already picked that up. Is it used for uh, Snowflake integration? So the Snowflake connector that we have does not use relative integration hub. It is purpose built. There's a separate uh, application that we developed. It's a separate data pipeline hub that we created. And those connectors are uh, specific, specific to analytics platform and it does not use relative integration hub as the underlying infrastructure. Uh, however, we do have a specific connector into Bureau Van Dyke that does leverage the Relto Integration Hub, and it's a series of recipes that have been built to enrich your data within Relto using RH. Uh, and then going forward, there's the, the capability to build um, connectors using SDKs on the platform itself and, and other tools and capabilities on RH, which uh, that's a question just came up in my mind, Sajid. Is uh, have you have you and the team looked at building any custom connectors on the RH platform using the SDKs? Uh, not not at this point. Yeah, not at this. Point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that capability is there, which you know opens up the flexibility even more. Uh, so uh, that was kind of the initial set of questions I had. I covered all the ones in chat. Uh, any other questions from anyone? So I think uh, I think we covered a, a good amount of uh, topics on the RIH and specific to your use case. Any last words that you have, Sajid, anything on your mind that you want to share that we haven't covered? No, I think like, you know, like for us, especially from a reality of perspective, if we are thinking about in, uh, integration, like just you don't have to go out and you know uh, and buy an integration platform. Even if you have an in internal integration platform, you know you don't have to rely on that team to build this integration. You don't need a super specialist, you know, a data integration, you know, architect to help you with the integration. State. So you know, think about these things. These are available to you, you know, to build the integration. Will just make your life easier and help you get to market faster. That's great. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, really appreciate the input and the insight. Um, so yeah, as Sajid mentioned, saved $100,000, four times as fast. You don't need specialists to go do this work. You can leverage your existing teams to build on RH. So I, I think hopefully, you know, all of you got, to, got a chance to hear it from, you know, Sajid himself and his team that went through the entire process. Uh, RH is available for, um, it, it is available at no extra cost. There's a question here if it's a free trial. Um, we can get it enabled. There is some paperwork that you have to sign, but um, you know I'll, we'll reach out to you and get that going. Um, but then a, a couple other things to add is, um, you know, thanks to Sajid and Advera, we are doing a case study. We're in the last stages of getting it approved and finalized and getting Sajid to review it. This will be a published case study on our website. We will share it with you. Uh, and that way you'll get to see in writing everything that we talked about and, and give hopefully give you some ideas and thoughts around how you might want to build use cases on relative integration hub. But you know, as you can see, a lot of value, a lot of flexibility, and, and hopefully, you know, you're you're able to use it to solve some of your own challenging business problems that you're encountering. Um, so I, I believe that that's pretty much it for me and Sajid. So Chris, do you want to close this one out for us? Ian, thanks so much uh, for providing some more information on Realtio Integration Hub. It's always really good to hear from our customers that are doing the work and 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 those things. So thank you everyone for coming. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, I know it was for me. It was a great story. And Sajid, thanks so much for coming and answering some of these questions. Uh, really tough questions that I put together. <laughs> so, no, but it was really good. So thank you, everyone. Uh, I'll stay on for a little bit. Would love for a little bit of feedback in the comments section. And I like to share that with, uh, with the folks here internally. So until next month, uh, our next show will be on, I think, 25th. So uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. It's Jed and Ian, thanks so much for hosting this show today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everybody.
Thanks, everyone.